The following question reads that the graph below shows the variation of the first ionization energy with proton number for some elements. The letters used are not the usual symbols for the elements. So, so uh, according to consecutive proton numbers, uh, the ionization energies are plotted. Uh, and as you can see, notice the trend in ionization energy. Whenever you move across the period, uh, there's a general increase in ionization energy, except for there are going to be dips at uh, group number 3 and group number 6. So there's a general increase in ionization energies as you move across the period. So this indicates one period. Uh, then there's a drop, you again at group 1, and then you move to group 2, then there's a dip at group 3, then 4, 5, group 6, there's going to be a dip. So then there's uh, there's the next period, then this would be period, uh, then this would be the next period. This uh, These elements over here, where the elements are not showing, uh, they're not showing a trend in ionization energy, they have almost invariable ionization energies. These must be transition elements, transition elements or D block elements. Their ionization energies are very similar and again the trend is followed as you move across the groups. Now the question is uh, that based on this graph of consecutive proton numbers uh, and ionization energies, first ionization energies, uh, we are asked which statement about the elements is correct. So the first option is P and X are in the same period of the periodic table. So uh, let's look at P and X. Remember, this over here is one period. This is the trend in ionization energies across a period. This over here is the same trend but in in another period or the lower period. So P and X are going to be in totally different periods. Uh, they would be in the same group because uh, the element at the top of the period that has the highest ionization energy in a particular period is going to be a noble gas. Uh, so it's, this is going to be a noble gas, this is also going to be a noble gas, but they would be in totally different uh, periods. So the first statement, option A, is going to be incorrect. If you move to option B now, the general increase from Q to X is due to increasing atomic radius. So you're moving Q to X. So when you move across the period, what happens is uh, that the atomic radius decreases because as you move across the period, so I've opened a periodic table. So as you move across the period, uh, pick any period, uh, the protons, you have 11 protons in sodium. In magnesium, you have 12 protons. Aluminium is 13, then 14. So as you move across the period, the number of protons increases. And as the number of protons increases, the attraction for electrons is also going to increase. So the size of the atom or atomic radius is going to become smaller because of more attraction. Argon over here has 18 protons. So 18 protons is going to have a much stronger attraction for its electrons compared to sodium, prot sodium which has only 11 protons. Remember, uh, uh, the shells are the same. Argon has three shells, sodium also has three shells. So, so uh, except for the fact that protons are increasing, so attraction increases and atomic radius decreases. So over here, I've plotted the values of the atomic radiuses and you can see that sodium to argon, there is a general decrease in atomic radius. And uh, because of the stronger attraction, chlorine has 17 protons, sodium just has 11 protons. So 11 protons is not going to attract its electron cloud very, very strongly. So it, which is why it leads to a bigger sodium atom compared to chlorine, which has a much stronger attraction for its, for its electrons. Hence, um, option B, the general increase from Q to X is due to increasing atomic radius is incorrect because the atomic radius is not increasing. It actually decreases. If you move across the period, the atomic radius actually decreases. So let's move to option C now. The small decrease from R to S is due to decreasing shielding. So where is R? So you have R and there's going to be a dip at S. So this is the dip that happens at group uh, 3. There is an increase in ionization energy from group 1 to 2 and there's going to be a dip at group 3. So I'm going to explain why there's going to be a dip at group 3. So um, let's discuss why there's a dip, uh, dip or decrease in ionization energy at group 3. As you move from group 2 group to group 3, the first ionization energy decreases. For example, aluminium over here has a lower first ionization energy compared to magnesium. Uh, to explain this, you, um, you remember this fact that magnesium and aluminium are very similar. Magnesium has 12 protons, aluminium has 13 protons. They probably, they almost have the same number of shells. Uh, the shielding effect is the same. They almost have the same size. So when when two atoms have similar 
atomic radius they have the similar type of shielding they have similar protons then the subshells are going to be important the subshells is what would create a difference in the two structures of uh, of the atoms so if you look at magnesium magnesium has 12 electrons so that is 1s2 2s2 2p6 and 3s2 so when you're removing an electron from magnesium what you're basically removing an electron from is the 3s subshell so this is the electron that you're basically taking out and remember in first ionization energy you're removing just one electron on the other hand when you're removing an electron from aluminium aluminium has 13 electrons so that is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and then 3p1 so when you're removing an electron from aluminium the electron is being removed from the 3p subshell so the reason why aluminium has a lower ionization energy or why it's easier to remove electron from aluminium is that this 3p electron over here is more sh more shielded remember the nucleus in aluminium is basically trying to attract this 3p uh, electron in this 3p subshell but there are more subshells coming in between the nucleus and the and the outer electron there is more shielding subshell wise there is more shielding because you have more subshells coming in between so the attraction between the nucleus and this electron would decrease uh, the electron is in a higher energy p orbital so it would be easier to remove remove that electron because it's more shielded compare this with magnesium in magnesium uh, the 3s is much closer to the nucleus over here and there is less number of subshells coming in between so the shielding effect would be lesser so in the case of aluminium it's much easier to remove an electron because it's further away it's more energetic and uh, the electron and the nucleus uh, a lot of subshells are coming in between so the shielding effect is higher so i've uh, written this down uh, this electron over here in aluminium easier to remove less ionization energy because it's more shielded it's more energetic it's in the higher energy 3p orbital and it's it's further away from the nucleus so coming back to the question this statement over here the small decrease from r to s uh, there's a dip at group s or group 3 or uh, you can call this aluminium this r would be magnesium this would be aluminium the small decrease from r to s is due to decreased shielding this is in fact uh, incorrect because it's due to increased shielding which we just discussed so option number three is also going to be incorrect that would leave us with only one option which is option d that the small decrease from u to v is due to repulsion between paired electrons so u is over here and v is over here so that's a dip at group six so i can pick uh, two elements uh, one would be in group six and the other one would be in group five and I'm going to use uh, those elements to explain why there would be a dip when you move from group 5 to group 6. So why is there a dip at group 6 or why is there a dip at V? So here are my two elements, one belonging to group 6, uh, which would be V in this case, and one belonging to group 5, which would be U in this case. And if you look at the electronic configuration of nitrogen, you would notice that uh, uh, the 2p subshell of nitrogen has one electron in each of the orbitals. But if you look at the electronic configuration of oxygen, oxygen has two electrons, has a, has a paired p orbital, uh, two orbitals that are half filled and one orbital which is completely paired. Now, uh, across the period, oxygen has more protons, so its ionization energy should be greater because the electrons would be more strongly attracted. But this is not the case. The ionization energy of oxygen is going to be lower, and the reason is that it would be the reason is that it would be easier to remove. Uh, electrons from a paired subshell because uh, paired electrons are easy to remove because due to spin pair repulsion these two electrons would be repelling each other over here in this p subshell a uh, repulsion is not a factor because each electron is in a separate orbital over here uh, repulsion is a factor because two electrons are in the same orbital and both electrons would be repelling each other so it would be much easier because of repulsion from the other electron it would be a lot easier to remove electrons so uh, because of spin pair repulsion ionization energy of oxygen would decrease it would become easier to remove electrons hence option d in this case is going to be correct uh, the small decrease from u to v is due to repulsion between paired electrons so at v at group six there's going to be a dip because of paired electrons repelling each other which would make it easier to actually remove electrons